level of study, I feel like that kind of plays a little, and I've never even asked him this before. Does that play into your Game Boy? And he's told me before, like, it's just a little bit, like, you're able to understand a little bit more of the systems in which he uses characters like Richter to be able oh, to play like, them the, he does. The kind of, like, simple, the, the the simple compilation, geometry. Yeah, the like simple that. geometry that goes yeah. into the character. But the one thing about TP Dog is he uses those items as a complement to the Richter's toolkit, not as the main force. That's what you're going to see in how TP Dom is. But as we go into this next player here, it is going to be Guts. One of those Wi-Fi wars. We did see Min Min. We did see Monty. Now we're seeing Guts. Guts last oh, week. Oh, yeah. Yeah, was the highest playing Wi-Fi warrior, highest placing Wi-Fi warrior we saw last week at MSM Offline. So for Guts, uh, he's definitely so far, for those of you guys wondering, he is leading the charge in terms of highest placing for MSM Offlines. I do know there's quite a lot of these players who have played a lot of MSM Online. He did pretty hot, and Guts is one of those characters who I'm really interested to see. It is going to be the battle of, of course, Richter versus Pike. And I don't know T3 also has a Mega Man, uh, which is sometimes he looks deep into those pockets to pull out here, but we'll see how that goes. Yeah, I can't imagine him changing the away from Richter this early. Mm -hmm. um, but, you know, sometimes there are, uh, you know, those sharks in the pool that you run into that make you kind of uh, think about bringing out your... Uh, your secondaries. And the interesting thing about uh, Richter, like you were saying, um, is the, the projectiles mm -hmm. uh, and whatnot. And after playing uh, a decent Richter for so long, like you do start to understand that like the, the projectiles are always the obvious main threat. Like they're yeah. there to frame trap you. And he can use the quick frames of the aerials to be like mm -hmm. the main tool for killing. And the way, the way you, the way I like to word it here is the whip is the main course, the projectile is the side dish. The side dish is what complements the main course into such a beautiful combination of flavors and of how T3 plays his character. And that's honestly what makes him one of the best Belmont mains in the world. Arguably, in my opinion, the best Belmont main, because I don't see anybody else do it as good as he does here. Of course, he is uh, part sponsored here by Carnage Gaming, of course, got He's going to be rocking to the I Ike. Ike, Ike, a character of, like we talked, we saw here with Ike Tyson, but it's a character I also still enjoy seeing, man. Just that character can bring a lot of hype moments here into his tomahawk, his conditioning, and his nair treatment here. But let's get enough talk here. Let's put the money where the mouth is. Who will win here? Is it going to be T3 or Guts? As he sets up that cross to be away from him to cover any aerials that Guts might have been going for. And right away, you can see the pressure coming out from T3. Yeah, I can already see uh, this matchup being a bit rough uh, for Ice. Uh, if he you know, set off stage, that onslaught can really limit his recovery. Uh, so he's gonna have to play A, super patient, uh, but he's gonna have to be very smart about being the one who kind of dictates the pace of the match uh, by making sure he isn't taking too much unnecessary damage. And just safely making it in so he can't capitalize. Uh, which he's doing a fantastic job of so far. Alright, that up, uh, up special gonna be not doing quite as much uh, for up there. No drag down up there. Oh, the holy water. Oh, the uppy. Unfortunately, miss spacing on the back of that. Back of the close up that spot. There he is. Uh, that's oh! Exact. Oh! See? No, fantastic DI. Wow. Great DI. For, well, also the combination of being in Town City, having a higher boss up. That will give T3 an option to just try to land a little bit. That's the one thing about Belmont, though. They do have one of the weakest opportunities in terms of landing. They have four landing options, and then down there is probably the only main one. But it's a lot of commitment. But what a trap there from T3. Able to force Guts to be up in the air. You're not going to get that up air, but it's not going to be no hits here. Guts looking to space out for that back end for that last opportune moment here. Down smash, good. And that's good patience from T3. Gets that. And no up smash confirmed. He knows that percentage because that'll send you a little bit more upwards. And you were able to get that confirmed on Guts here. There's Axe here. And oh, that coverage so with the close. Holy Water. I'm actually very surprised to see uh, it. Didn't, didn't snap less. That was super close. All right, back air. There's that cross. Looking to cover T3 a little bit. That spike attempt. Oh, how do you grab there instead, actually? Okay, T3, like that, angled up, angled forward there. That cross the cover, any jump there from Guts. That's not going to move in within each aerial. He knows once he gets the snare, and once he pressures T3 enough on the post range with that nair, he can proceed to try to read T3 on the landing. And that's one thing that will be rough here for Ike, I'm sorry, for Belmont in the matchup. If Ike can get you in a juggle situation and catch you on the landings in which Belmont suffers, I can start to look to win way more against you. Yeah, absolutely. 
Oh, very, very, very good uh, bread and butter combo coming out from uh, Uh But Gus here actually in the lead, uh, doing a very, very good job. Uh, like I said, with his attempt to be uh, keeping the pace of this match and avoiding the onslaught of uh, projectiles uh, and whatnot. But what's been like the biggest threat here uh, so far is like what you bought up earlier. It's angled forward and back air uh, that's been able to just like clip uh, clip the height of uh, uh, but very good about the about the <laughs> that, uh, power shield alright far throw if you're looking for an opportunity no aerials here he's at 104 any aerial from Ike could just be either sending him off the stage or a stock loss. Good on Guts to immediately go for the back and he sees that kill percent. Might as well try to execute on it. Look for the landing on the Belmont. That's why we see that dash attack. Just that little bit of range and knowing that he might try to land towards the ledge is a great way to just read his opponent. C3 on that uppy. Barely enough here. 114. This is two combos. I would say arguably a T3 combo at this point away from being able to take it here. And I like that read towards that center stage. CT looking to take control here, 43 looking on the landing here against Guts. Guts with this neutral air. He's looking for an aerial, but no opportunity. T3, a little bit of a break here. Oh, but unfortunately on that up B, that will be the quick punch from Guts on that up smash. Not going to fall into that pressure that he saw. Yeah, I'm actually very surprised that uh, a lot of these uh, high committal moves actually have been hitting. There were a couple of times where um, they went for uh, an option that what I felt was the optimal choice, um, but <laughs> there was a lot of misspacing and that very last stock uh, falling from that middle platform to uh, the surrounding area. Just like a tiny bit of misspacing, but then you just throw out a, a smash and it just does it because, you know, I just smash. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you said it right, man. You took the words right out of my mouth. <laughs> Uh, but going into game two here, uh, this is big for Guts, man. Like I said, he is the highest placing MSM Wi-Fi warrior that last week, man, he placed so high. And for T3, man, with such a player of his caliber, we'll see how it goes. Honestly, I don't know the matchup myself, but I can tell you right now, I can see why it's so hard for T3 here. And we'll see if he can, how he can keep up his game plan, but these aerials and these forward airs are looking to connect, and that 44% is looking to be there for a reason, but Guts on that speed there. Looking up B, looking at, it's not going to kill, but it's looking to catch T3 and puts a percent in back in return. Yeah, definitely. Uh, and also, I'm personally surprised. Uh, one of the tools that VXN has been seeing that I feel like is extremely helpful in this matchup is the, uh, the down tilt, closing up that distance and uh, really capitalizing on getting eye on the base. Uh, oh, what a read to on that roll on that landing there. Up air, what a yeah. change up on the up B here, oh. but unfortunately that high ceiling will be big for Guts. Good pressure, both cross and the forward of Porto will meet. Guts looking to land here with a neutral air, but man, T3 is looking to just guard that center stage. Guts looking for that end on. Look at that pressure. You see Guts on the attempt. Goes for the empty hop. No hit, no neutral air. There's going to be T3 there and getting the stock here. Guts with the up air looking to see if he can catch a landing. Good for T3 here. No down air as we saw that last time. Yeah, hop. again, just like that, that, that committal up smash. Like some, some, some options I'm definitely, uh, definitely questioning, but you know, Guts is uh, where he is. <laughs> Down tilt, light, and like that too. And you can see that patience from Guts. Looks to see, if, is there an air dodge? Where's the movement? Where is he gonna go? Where can I get this follow up? T3 on that angle forward after the holy water. Guts on that set, on that roll, and there's T3 with two hits. What is that? Cross and back air. All right, that back air's gonna be setting him off stage. Oh my gosh, he's actually gonna be mistiming the forward air. Uh, and just eating that fully charged uh, side on the right. But the axe, making its mark, but not not killing. I sitting at a healthy 141. Mm -hmm. For those of you back at home too, you see that angled forward tilt, which is a 45 degree angle forward air. And it's good because Ike might be jumping, but also that ground pressure that you already preemptively see from cross. Ike also having a tall earth box is good enough for Tiki to still be able to go for those angled forward airs. Right, especially in the air, that's what I'm talking about. He was eating a lot of those. Oh, uh, no. I'm assuming he didn't have a jump because he fast fell the heck out of Oh, that. what an assist from the comeback on that class here. Uh, of course, C3, no slouch, holds the shield. That forward smash would have been big. If it doesn't kill, it's got him off the stage. And that forward smash in again here. You can see Guts looking to just wipe that stock as clean as possible, yeah. as soon as possible. Oh, that was so unfortunate, though, because he's been fishing for these smash attacks. So every time he does one, uh, they're punishable. 
Yeah, they're punishable, and now all of a sudden he's at 77%, and had he just gone for something, or just stayed a little bit more patient, uh, he would probably be even up the stock still. Oh, no grab from D3. He earned enough from the pressure here, but Guts is looking to get an aerial here. They're gonna get a landing, no neutral landing, catches on the grab. Guts finally with some stage down. control here. Can he get this read? They're gonna get anything. Down tilt, like that patience. No forward tilt here. Yeah. And I still like that from Guts. You see that he wants to see if TP is going to either break even. Is he gonna be the one to finally hold out to get that air dodge, or how will he land? Guts in the quick draw landing, neutral layout, what a way to come back so aggressively as he waits out from that grab. Oh, very good air dodge. That's easy bomb, unfortunately. Up beat, that's not enough here. High ceiling, Guts 135. It's do or die for Guts here. This is his last stock. I cast some weight here, but it will not be enough to get hit by the vampire killer. That is the up tilt with a little bit of a wide arc to beat out the landing here as T3 takes it to game three. Man, moving on from here, uh... Do you think it's possible that we can see a, a character pick, or do you think he's uh, he's confident in this matchup? It's, because it's, that's how I expected it to go. I felt like yeah, Ike yeah. was just going to have a rough time weaving in a, out of all these projectiles and dealing with the uh, the very quick frame data of mm -hmm. those, those, those uh, order back here. And that's the thing, too, is I don't know Guts enough to say like he might have gone for a character switch, which we don't see. But I do like how he played game one. It's a, a, And we still see some reminiscence of that in game two. You could see that down tilt, you could see that way, you could see that look for the punish. You could see that a little bit here up against T3, but T3 has adapted a little bit here in the changes here. Now it's going to be adaptation for both players into game three, and we'll see how things go here. Only one can advance higher up in the pools. And is it going to be Dom or is it going to be Guts? Oh man, as we were talking about uh, earlier when it comes to uh, benefactors and benefits from, uh, from stage picks, uh, I feel like this is such a phenomenal stage uh, for both these characters. But, I would say, but in this matchup, I feel like for Richter, yeah, he's gonna get so much more mileage on this. And I it's feel a like smaller stage, and it's good for Richter to be able to kill you on the blast zones here. But for Guts, it's good for him to juggle. Look at that forward air attack. He knew if he could have that forward air, everything that T3 would have worked for would have been for not. Yeah, yeah. The only thing that uh. You know, it's kind of good for Guts with the, uh, the highest ceiling. Yeah, I do so. like the axe throw here, just because it, you can see that as Guts stretches that quick draw, it gives T3 that time to possibly meet it, and it's closer every second. No forward air, but the forward tilt. Can we talk about that life insurance and that cross that will oh, save dude, him? That's why, <laughs> that's, that's why he always looks to toss it. You, you either toss it away, toss it in the air, Get it out there, because if your opponent is going to go for a grab, an aerial, it could be that one thing that big breaks the combo. Up tilt, nice. You can see how he pops up afterwards in those percents. Up here to cover that. Guts is receiving so much from T3 that he has such a stock lead. Guts not on being able to land here, but he looks, at, he looks to work his way onto the center stage. Finally, the back hit of near to the back air, and that will be Guts on stage control. I want to see how he gets this. No neutral air, but you can, you can see that life insurance. Yeah, I get, I get it. Yeah, it's the, it's, it's the returning part of the, uh, the cross. Right. You got a good package deal, man. I'm telling you right now. Let me let me get in on that. Yeah, absolutely. And again, the high uh, the high ceiling coming in clutch for uh, for guts. A very very high percent, but still not killing quite yet. That F tilt though, gonna close out the stock. Guts still at, sitting at 167. It's not gonna take much for it to kill on the on any blast zone at this point now. But you can see how patient he is with the shielding, the spot dodging. Throw's not gonna kill. He's gonna have to avoid all of this though. He's got to be a lot more uh, spatially aware yeah. of the rebound of the cross. Like that's that's what's killing him. I mean, so it, often. it's the pressure that TP is doing, right? He covers the he covers what jump and cross. No, he covers get up and roll with cross. Yeah. He covers the he puts in pressure with uh, with, with holy water, and he can cover the jump with forward air. You can see how TP is putting all those things in together. Like I said, one is the meat and the potatoes. And definitely we're seeing how that goes on, how he uses those items to complement the cross and complement the whip as well. Yeah, he's a master of the craft of frame trapping. Absolutely. Yeah. We're seeing all of it right here, like right, perfectly on display. Um, we thought this was a good stage for cross. Now the kind of the things have changed here. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I like that from Guts, so he sees that TP is opted for some jumps. Go for these up airs. Get something here so you can juggle Richter. You can get these platform extensions here on Battlefield. But TP has so much control. Holy Water, I like that. Look at it, just get that good punishes on with possibly the whiff punish range. All right, looking for the landing of Guts for Guts here again. No dice. 
cross up here gets only the backhand of Nair, but he knows how much that can mean because he can hit the backhand of Nair into the back air. Yeah, and like, but I think what I finally now notice is that um, it's when it, it's when T3 Dom, or sorry, excuse me, it's when Guts uh, does a high committal move that allows T3 Dom to get back on the stage from up high. Every time that Guts is in a a point at where he is basically where Ike wants to be, you know, he wants to be below his opponent, sharking with that insane uh, disjoint. But he doesn't, he doesn't, he doesn't commit a move like a smash attack or a dash attack, and that's what allows oh. him to get back, uh, allows Dom to get back on stage, and unfortunately, just yeah, give Ike he, he, co he covers literally neutral get up, roll get up, with just cross being out there, and now it's gonna be the final opportunity for Guts to get anything back on the stage here. 128 to 192, man. Yeah. I don't want to see go up, Guts go out like this, but it's looking to be something that the story has already been running. Can Guts break the script? Uh, attempt on the grab here, but finally Guts gets a little bit of a break there. 192 with the oh, back air, cut off the heels. Spawn. Falling from spawn with the back air. Yeah, that invincibility uh, will be enough here, and that will be